Welcome on people, it's Mr. Bill back again with the previous show, I hope everyone's fit and well. And yes, Forrest are back in action and this time it's their away day at the capital against Tottenham Hotspur. If you are new to our channel, please do hit the like button, subscribe if you're new. And if you are re-watching this, get your score predictions score in the comment section and in the comment section as well to get involved. Right, I've got a special guest, he's been on this channel uh, not recently. Uh, my name's Phil, Chris from Spurs Chat Podcast. How are you doing, Chris? Ben, I'm doing very well. Um, how are you? I'm sure you're you're smiling after that three-one win against Fulham midweek. Can you tell? <laughs> can, you, can you tell? Well, well we, we we struggled against them big time a couple of weeks ago. So that result, you know, it did raise my eyebrows. I must say. Oh, cheers! So, let's say Chris, uh, you follow Spurs, hoping away, just like the soul. Um, before we do, Chris, um, go and promote your channel so people can follow you. Yeah, I run a Tottenham related YouTube channel called Tottenham Fan Chris Cowlin. We also do the Spurs Chat podcast. Uh, we we record a podcast straight after every game. I follow Spurs home and away and cover all of the latest news and everything to do with Tottenham and uh, absolutely love it. Very similar to this channel. Um, yeah, thank you. Yeah, so that's a bit, it's, it's in the title. So everyone goes and subscribe to Chris because he's actually, he does, he does practice for work. I mean, I've been watching his, his vlogs, even if he is a Spurs one. Because I like to watch some of their ex quite a lot quite a lot of ex boys players that do go to Spurs. I'll say we'll be giving a speak about Brennan Johnson as well. Right, so Chris, let's talk about Spurs. Um we've got to talk about it. When you lot came to City Grounds, you beat your 2-0. Um since then, how's Spurs been going on? Do you know what, um, Ben? This season was all about progression. It was all about entertaining the fans. And uh, Ange Postacoglu has done both of those things. Um, mm -hmm. I think that the football club has really moved on uh, from where we were. We've gone around in circles ever since we were in the Champions League final in 2019, which, of course, is nearly five years ago. Uh, how quick has that gone? But we've gone through um, Jose Mourinho, Nuno Espirito Santo, Antonio Conte. Um, this season has been so, so different in so many ways. We've had two transfer windows under Ange, which have been really, really decent. Um, mm -hmm. As Spurs fans, we're not used to seeing um, us sign players so early on in transfer windows, but we've done that in both windows so far. Really, really decent players coming in through the door. Of course, Harry Kane left in the summer. Everyone was thinking, where on earth are those 30 goals going to come from? Yeah. We've not really struggled in front of goal. Yes, we could have scored more, um, but you know, when people think Harry Kane left, how on earth are you going to replace those goals? We have. We have replaced those goals and Spurs are pushing on the door for top four. And if you asked any Spurs fan at the start of the season, will Spurs be anywhere near the top four at the end of the season? Most of them would have said no chance. Um, but Poster Coglu's done a great job. There has been a few bumps in the road. His words, not mine. And, uh, you know, I do agree with that. There's been a few potholes as well, as, a, as I mentioned and alluded to there, the, the Fulham game a couple of weeks ago. Weirdly, in the last 42 Premier League games, that is the only one we haven't scored in um, against Fulham, uh, which was probably the worst display of the season. Um, the best display of the season was a week before beating Aston Villa, of course, in the top four right now. Um, you know, we, we beat them 4-0. Great display. Yeah. The very next week, lost, yeah. lost to Fulham. Um, it's been up and down. Um, but, of course, when a new manager comes in, um, you know, every player's got to get used to how they want to play. Uh, the intensity is right up there and uh, Ange demands the absolute best. And we can see as Spurs fans exactly what he is trying to do. And that is really pleasing. And uh, as I said, um, you know, it has been entertaining and uh, there has been like a party atmosphere. You know, when we win at the Spurs Stadium uh, and we've won quite a lot of games this season, we haven't drawn, by the way. Uh, which is an interesting stat, either, either won or lost. But when we've won, it's been like a party atmosphere there um, and everyone's really enjoying it. Mm. You mentioned your manager, like I said, it's always going to be under pressure of, of you, you, like you always say, winning trophies at Spurs. And do you think, like I said, Ange has done, like, at three persons as they're outside looking in, I think he's done a good job. This season, like I said, it's top four. What do you expect, like, going forward? Like I said, we, we are going to talk about the players, but. Do you think, like I said, Champions League football is, is a must for Spurs this season? I think it was all about progression, Ben. I think that there is still a long, long way to go. And I'm not going to sit here and say we're going to be playing Champions League football next year because who knows what happened. We've got some very, very tough games coming up from now until the end of the season. You know, we play 
Uh, I think it's Chelsea, Arsenal and Liverpool all Chelsea, within yeah, the matter right. of eight days, which is a crazy, mm -hmm. crazy uh, fixture list and, and schedule. But, you know, you never know what's going to happen. But whatever happens, whether Spurs are playing in the Champions League or it looks like now the Europa League, we have progressed. We've had no European football at the Spurs Stadium this season. So whatever happens, whatever European football we are playing next year, it is progression. Uh, we have moved on. And uh, like I said, we, we can see what Angie's doing. But another transfer window, like last summer, this summer, um, then we are in for some exciting times. But whatever happens, whatever European football we're playing next year, you know, we do need more in-depth uh, in the squad, you know, certainly to, to cover those European games because... Another interesting stat for you, at the end of this year, we would have played 38 Premier League games, only one in the League Cup and only two in the FA Cup, 41 wow. matches. Yeah. So, you know, for any Premier League team, a minimum, uh, you know, the minimum amount of games is 40. We've played, we would have played 41. Um, so, you know, I'm looking forward to European football. I've really missed it um, this season. So I'm certainly looking forward to it next season. But you know, like I keep saying on my channel and uh, every other channel that I go on, you know, a trophy, um, you know, we need a trophy in the cabinet as soon as possible. Um, but I think Ange is definitely the man to to do that. He speaks so well in press conferences. He handles himself so well. He identifies the players that he wants. He has a much more bigger say what's happening at the football club right now than uh, most previous managers that we have seen and, and heard from. So, uh, but the way he speaks is is an absolute delight and uh, he is completely on the fan side and even in the press conference yesterday he said you know i'm not speaking to you journalists i'm talking to the fans you know the yeah, fans you know hear, hear me through these press conferences i, I love that i love that yeah i look you know what you say that i think i love it myself um before we talk about all this and talk about as again i i see people the way he plays football like he, he's it's he, it's it's been really attacking football, and it's really I think if Forrest have got to like really defend against people, are you impressed the way he plays? Because when you came to sit ground, I mean, it's two 0 I've got to say it. Um, are you impressed with it, or do you think he needs to be more defensive? Because he doesn't, it's like he doesn't care. It's like, it's like forward, and he doesn't like what game was it? it was Liverpool away? No, was it, was it um, Chelsea, Chelsea at home? Chelsea, Chelsea at home. Chelsea at home. He was lying down to many. He's still going. What, what, ben, what? I, I, I tell you what, I have never, ever seen ever in my life um, us lose 4-1 at home and then a reaction like that to applaud yeah. the players and applaud the manager the way that we did. And the fans were looking at each other as if to say, wow, that was fantastic. And it's, we just lost 4-1. And everyone was looking at one another going, wow, that was fantastic. Because the way that, the, the way that we played and the way that we tried to go uh, you know, right until the very end to, to try and score goals. But um, I think people have enjoyed, you know, certain parts of this season. But I think really, um, if I'm completely honest and frank about it, I think that the big test uh, and what we're going to see um, what Andrew's about is next season. Uh, because, of course, when you throw all European games in and if we do go, you know, further in the cup competitions, it's how... He handles that. You know, we've seen him do it at Celtic and be very successful, win a treble. We've seen him go to, you know, wherever he's gone. You know, wherever he's gone, he's been successful as a manager. Um, so it is going to be interesting. But the style of play, the fans have really enjoyed it. Um, but whether you can consistently play like that, game in, game out, in the Premier League, because, of course, we know the Premier League is, a, is completely different to any other league in the world. That's why it's the best one. Um I think a lot of fans were quite shocked because, like I said earlier, when we went to Aston Villa and beat them so comfortably, played yeah. so well, and then the very next week you go to Fulham and everyone's expecting another big win and another big performance and then losing 3-0, that's probably the, the answer to your question. Can you play that way against mm -hmm. every team in the Premier League? I don't think you can. So I think there are slight adjustments to be made to this system, but publicly and says... We don't change our approach. We don't change the way that we play. We don't change our system. So it will be interesting to see how he does work that in the future. Mm. Um, people in the chat say, if you, this is Chris. He's his first band, so please show some love to his channel. Um, right, the question is, Chris, I think all five fans that, um, want to know, as a fan, Brian Johnson, x Forest player. I, I look at Spurs, all Spurs fans and that, and he's had his ups, he's had his downs. But as a Spurs fan, Chris, you know you you follow Spurs up and down the country. 
what's your opinion on Brennan? Because as a Forest fan, uh, because he's come through uh, Academy, and like I said, Spurs are a big club. What's your opinion on Brennan? Because like I said, I see a little bit fans, Spurs fans getting frustrated a little bit with it, but he's going to a club, and your Spurs fan reputation is like, get top four football, but I see, I see a fan saying, oh, he's not good enough, this and that, but what, what's your opinion on Brennan? I'm completely with Ange Postacoglu on this one. Ange has been so complimentary about him um, in the last couple of weeks, particularly the last press conference yesterday, recorded yesterday, um, that I think there is so much more to come from Brennan Johnson. We have yeah. seen glimpses of, of what he can do. Um, Postacoglu said about, um, you know, it's about the way that he adapts to the football club, the way that he wants, uh, Postacoglu wants Brennan Johnson to play, how he wants him to perform and what positions to get in. We have seen um, a different Brennan Johnson, I believe, in the last couple of weeks. He's been coming off the bench and he's been uh, he's been our super sub, if you like. He scored five goals in the Premier League for us this season. Um, I have been impressed. Um, but earlier on in the season, I think he did struggle. But I think it's about adapting to the way that we play and the way that Ange wants him to, to play and the positions that he wants him to get in. But the intensity is so high. You know, especially the wingers and, and, and Ange, you know, certainly wants, uh, you know, the wingers to be putting in crosses and, and contributing towards goals as well. But it is fair to say, Ben, you've probably seen it on social media earlier on in the season. There has been a lot of um, abuse of Brennan Johnson. And what I do think is a big shame is the fact that Brennan Johnson put something on Instagram and now it's restricted that, you know, people that don't follow him now can't comment because of, you know, certain comments that are made. But Unfortunately, this is the this is modern day football where you know if players yeah. don't perform to 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 a level that some fans expect, then they do get abused on social media, which I think is terrible. Um, but I think that there is a, a big future uh, for Brennan Johnson at the football club, and I am excited about what the future future holds for a lot of these players because I think a lot of fans, particularly Spurs fans, I think they forget on how young this group of Spurs players are. And, mm. you know, under Ange Postacoglu, he's only going to improve these players. And I think that we've seen that. I think that, you know, week by week, month by month, um, you know, certain players have improved and Brennan Johnson is definitely one of them. Mm. Another one, and um, Nuno. We're talking about Nuno, not the Forest manager. Oh. Nuno. <laughs> I knew you would see that. Um, I've Nuno. forgotten about him. <laughs> Um, he wasn't here long enough. Yeah, that, that's the thing. Let, let, let's 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 see. Like from outside looking in, like I said, he did do well. Was, oh, 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 I don't know. I don't think he, Spurs fans are oh, too early to judge. Like I said, it was like Stephen Brennan. It was too late to ben, judge. Him, ben, let, let let me ask you: How did you feel when Nuno was appointed at Forest? Fun, fun, Forest fan. Right, answer this what Chris said. When Nuno came to Forest, how did you feel? I'll say. He did well, he did fantastic for Wolves, right? Did he get play did they get managed in the month? The first three for the first three months. Was it the first three months or the first month? Was it? No, what 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 happened at Spurs? He came to Tottenham and the first game was Manchester City at home. We beat them one nil. We yes. we won our we won our first three games one nil. And then we went to not uh, then went to Crystal Palace and we lost three nil. Uh and and that was where it all went wrong. And uh, you know, from then and then um Lucas Moura was our best player. It was the Manchester United home game. And it was yeah. when Ole Gunnar Solskjaer, if he'd lost, he was going to get sacked. If yeah, Nuno yeah, lost, he, it looked like he was going to get the sack. And then um, Lucas Moura was probably one of our best players on the pitch. He took him off. He took him off. The whole of the Tottenham Hotspur Stadium were like, what on earth are you doing? And then the whole crowd, the whole crowd started singing, you don't know what you're doing. And I, and I looked around and I thought, when a crowd sings that, you're done. There's no way you're going to be yeah. in the job tomorrow. And that's exactly what happened. But Nuno's time at Spurs was was a really weird time. You know, we, we waited so long to appoint a manager. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. And, yeah. And, and then Nuno come along and, and not a lot of people were happy at the time. Um, you know, it seemed like we were going around in circles. And, you know, when you think about the, types, the, the type of football that we played under Nuno to the type of football that we're playing now and where the football club is now, you know, it's come on leaps and bounds. But um, you know, for Forrest, you know, I wish you guys all the very best and hopefully... I'll tell you this, from, from outside looking in, Chris, as new North American Forest manager, do you think he'll be successful or not? That's the question, uh, because for me, for me, 
one win, two wins this year. We beat, like I said, we won three uh, one the other day. Um, it's a big, it's a big but, challenge, isn't it? What, what, whoever comes in, uh, uh, you know. At the time, um, I know a lot of Forest fans probably won't agree with me. Um, and, and what do I know as a Tottenham fan talking about Forest? But I didn't really agree with Steve Cooper being sacked. I thought he'd done a wonderful job there. Um, but to, to then bring Nuno in, um, is that the right man? You know, he came in and you got that win away at Newcastle, which I watched that game and I was like, wow. You know, yes. wow. Yes. You know, that, was, that was me well. I went to the game, people. You can see the vlog or watch it. Amazing day. So, Chris. Yeah, uh, watch that game and, and, you know, I was wowed by it. Um, but it's now, you know, of course, you've got the point deduction, which doesn't help. You would be, I think, in 15th rather than 17th. But, yeah, yeah you know, I think I think some of your fixtures I looked at, you've still got to play, I think, Sheffield United and Burnley, which United, are um, yeah. a, a massive, massive games. But, you know, every single game now, you know, from now until the end of the season, no matter what team you are, whether you're fighting relegation or going for top four or in the middle, you know, everyone is fighting for something and everyone wants to win these last few games and finish the season strong. But as far as Nuno goes, you know, I do wish him all of the very best. He seems a great guy. Do you, um, do you think he'll be successful at Forest? That's the question. That's the question. Um, be honest, be honest. Do you think he'll be successful? What do you what do you deem as successful? Keeping Forest up is that is, is that what you keeping, mean by success? Keeping keep, keep Forest up. Stick, keep I, in think for, I, I think Nottingham Forest will stay up this season. I do. I, I think that you'll be playing Premier League football next next year. Okay. Um, I, I, I think that I think that Burnley and and Sheffield United have already gone. Um, Luton. I love their fighting spirit, uh, but the fact that you know they were three 0 up at Bournemouth a couple of weeks ago and then they lost four yeah. three. Um, it's games like that, I think, that are really going to let them down. And, uh, of course, Luton in the last couple of weeks, you know, they played Spurs. We scraped a win against them and uh, they lost to Arsenal the other day. Um, so, yeah, I do think Forrest will stay up. Mm. Quick, two, two more questions, Chris. Um, what, what, I know, again, there's good, there's good relationships. We always saw good players to you, as always, like Brennan Johnson, Jamie Jenners, Michael, uh, Michael Dawson, Andy Reid, you can go there on. I, I know you've been linked with Mark Gibbs White. Yeah. Um, and he keeps keep coming and going. What, what's your. Would he. I'm not saying, right, Forest fans, before you jump the gun, I'm not saying that I want Mark Gibbs White to go to Spurs. I'm not saying that. I'm saying, do you. If. If. Mark Gibbs White came to Spurs, would he, would he fit in? Yes or no? Um, I think that he would probably. Um, he probably fit what Spurs want because Spurs are going after young players for the future. Um, and I think that Spurs are now very, very data driven. So I think it all depends on data. Um, whether Spurs go in the Premier League and, and buy players like Morgan Gibbs White for a lot of money, I mm -hmm. think those days are over. So I can't actually see that move happening. Um, I think any player under Ange Postacoglu will improve. Um, in order for Spurs to go to that next level, mm. I I wouldn't think that Morgan Gibbs White would make Spurs a better team. Can I reverse that question and ask you? Because of course you know a lot more about him than yep. I do. Do you yep. think that he would fit in this Spurs team? Because when I look at the Tottenham bench this season, it has really, really improved to what we've had in the last couple of years. And, you know, we've certainly got a, a few game changers and, and some real depth and quality there. But it is now about making that depth, you know, even better quality, you know, if you're going to be playing European football. But Morgan Gibbs-White, does that, does it make Spurs a better squad, in your opinion? When, when, Chris, man, but like, when he came to you a lot, I thought he'd be successful. The thing with Morgan Gibbs White, and I saw a debate on Talk Sport about Jay Manson and Morgan Gibbs White. Yeah. Who's, is Morgan Gibbs White better than Jay Manson to get in the squad? Future wise, Morgan Gibbs White is versatile. He, do, he doesn't have to play that number 10 role, so he can play a number 8 role, he can play winners. I think he'll suit Spurs if he did sign for you a lot, because I think he, 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 he can be like relaxed today sometimes on um, his final ball. But I think the way Ans plays, I personally think if we did have to sell him, I think he'll shoot shoot Spurs with it. Um, but Madison is really ahead of him, if I'm honest. Um, but if Spurs, if I had to see if I'm, if Morgan's White, because Spurs, I think 
it'd be, it'd be a condition for you lot, but I don't want him to go. Don't, don't be both fans. Don't think I, I want him to go, but I don't. But I, I think he'd be a good asset for you lot. For um, fight for the maternal, he can play anyway. So I think he'd be good. It'd, it'd be a good decision for you lot, if, if I'm honest. But I, I, I think, yeah, that's a question. Yeah, I think it would, it would be good for you lot if you did. I think they've got the same amount of assists, and and when you think, um, you know, one one team's going for the top four and one team's fighting relegation. I know Madison's had his injury problems, but you know, hopefully, um, we will see a, a different James Madison from now until the end of the season. But I think it's fair to say, Ben, if if uh, if the choice was between playing James Madison or Gibbs White, I think uh, most people would go for Madison. One mm, percent. Uh, right. One more question before, no, two more questions before Chris, before we do go. Uh, plus, uh, after this show, I'm going on Chris's channel. So please, Forest fans, give me some backup and give me some support. Uh, I'll be going <laughs> on uh, to, to help on his channel. So the link, like I said, the link is in the uh, title. So please click on Chris's Chris link for the half past one. Um, I think you've already answered this. Can Spurs get top four? Yes or no? We certainly can get top four. Um, it is now about, you know, I think that is going to be a very defining week, as I mentioned earlier, that that, that spell of eight days of playing um, Arsenal, Chelsea and Liverpool. Uh, you know, we've got some very, very tough games, but it is in our hands, essentially, because we've got a game in hand over Aston Villa. We're two points away from top four. Villa have got a couple of very, very difficult games as well. So, yes, we certainly can do it. Whether we will do it... Um, I really do hope so, but you never know, Ben. You, you never know in football, do you? But as I said earlier, um, and I'm not avoiding the question, it's just whether we're playing Champions League or the Europa League, it's certainly been progress. And, you know, with another window or two, you know, and said, and said the other day, he wants to be competing for the Premier League title in 12 months' yeah. time. I yeah. think that said a lot. You know, he wanted success this season. We've had a lot of off-field and on-field battles this season but as far as the football goes and as far as the uh, football club and you know the bigger picture when you see the bigger picture we have progressed you know on and off the pitch you know since Ange has been here so that that is a a, a great thing to see mm. uh, right the people in the chat and as well as while we're watching this uh, get score pictures in now uh, Chris what's your score prediction and, and uh, uh, last season I went to Spurs first time fantastic stadium as well we lost 3-1 um I think it was unlucky that game. I think it was very unlucky, but it is what it is. Um, what's the Are score you going on Sunday? Of course I'm going. That's a tough question, Chris. Of course <laughs> I'm going. <laughs> um, can, I, can I ask you, what did, you, what did the Forest fans think of the game being changed? Then, of course, it was changed to Monday night, and now it's been changed back to the Sunday. Um, uh, well, to fit, right, it was Monday. I had to change my shift. And then we, two weeks later, it was changed to Sunday. Of, of bloody, so it was, it was a... Uh, look, lucky I was off Sunday, but I had to. It took me three weeks to change my shift on that yeah. Monday. So yeah. it's all right, but I know there's quite my, my friend Des. He's doing the um, the Brighton marathon, and he's got to travel from Brighton to Spurs, and he's going to miss the first half. So I know quite a lot of Forest fans are not happy with that, but that's Sky yeah. football and that's Premier League football for you, and and we've got to adapt to it. So it is what it is. Uh, Chris, what's score prediction for um, tomorrow? I'm going to go for a Spurs win. Um, I don't think it's going to be easy at all. Um, I think it's going to be 2-1 Tottenham. And I wouldn't be at all surprised to see someone like Gibbs White put you guys 1-0 up uh, and then we get a late winner. Um, we've done that so often. And uh, I'll tell you what, the man to look out for in uh, last-minute winners or late winners is our man, Hunmin Son, our captain. Just made his 400th yeah. appearance for Tottenham and uh, he's been an absolute superstar for us this year. A real leader on the pitch, off the pitch as well. And uh, yeah, but I do expect Spurs to win. Mm. When you talk about sorry, I'm not going to trip on about it. Like, I, I remember last season he was quiet. He didn't, we didn't hear a pin drop. And then out of, no, out of nowhere, he scored a goal. So King got a brace and then Son just out of nowhere scored a goal. So it's like saying... Hope we keep Son quiet. No, can't keep it quiet because he keep, if you keep, he'll keep himself quiet and still score. So he's, he's another threat. But um, Chris, it's been a pleasure. Uh, thank you very much for taking your time for coming on my channel. And as well, people, I'll be on Chris's channel um, to talk about Forest. Um, so if you do, please be Forest fans. Come on, Chris's channel. The link is in the title. Click on that, and it'll be there for uh, half past one. So please don't want that. Uh, Chris, I do appreciate. Thank you for coming up on the channel. And that's it, people. If you are. New to our channel, please do hit the like button, 
subscribe if you're new and like comment below people if you are re-watching this what is your score picture for tomorrow i'll be there for tomorrow as well we'll be the usual clear davy uh clear uh callum and the rest of them listen the gang um uh, if we get on the vlog hopefully i'll see chris there um for the game as well um but people peace out the preview the review show will be on monday because i won't i won't make, make it back in time for sunday night so the previous the review show will be sunday right first chris Peace and love, boys, and I'll see you tomorrow at Wild Lane. Thank you, boys. Cheers, Ben.